to a new RFM 103.7. Good times and great music and a little nutrition and food and almost uh, into relationship mode today. We kind of are with Professor Claire Collins from the University of Newcastle. Having that good relationship with food, uh, sometimes, unfortunately, it's a marriage, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it is. It is a real marriage. Mm. We'll talk at about how to make that a happy marriage. but so, Sometimes I think I need a divorce. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear. We better, we better start... Start talking that, then. Wouldn't that be fasting or that'd be separation? Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, we need a good relationship with our food and that's pretty much where we're at this morning. Yeah, absolutely. And there is a way to check that. Mm. Four quick points for you, Mark. So um, are you in tune with your body cues so that you know when you're hungry, when you're not and when you're feeling full? And actually some people go, no, I just eat because it's lunchtime. Mm. So thinking about whether you've got those tummy rumbles or not. Um, do you eat appropriate amounts of food? You eat a variety and so that you you feel well from eating. Are you just as comfortable eating with others as you are eating alone or does that cause stress? And can you enjoy food without feeling guilt or it just dominating your life? That's the only thing. Now, if you say no, 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 then it might be time to have a deeper checkup about your food relationship. I reckon on that first one, the one that got me, the one about feeling full, I think if you're just sitting there mindless, putting more food, more food, more food in, you kind of miss that cue. If you sort of have the the right amount, you can sort of the brain can catch up a little bit and go, actually, I don't need any more. Yeah, I'm actually not hungry yeah. and it's just a habit. Well, one of the key things <clears throat> for then diving a bit deeper, if you go, oh, maybe I do need a you know, a checkup, a relationship checkup with food, is to keep what we call a food mood diary. Now, we've got a free one you can download on our website called No Money, No Time. Just type that in the search. And if you, it's more than just writing down what you're eating. It's who you're with, where you are, how you're feeling at the time. And then when you reflect on that, if your food relationship does need a bit of work, you might be recognising, oh, look, there's a pattern. Every time I'm stressed, I'm straight to the fridge or straight to the biscuit barrel or the vending machine at work. But there really is a lot of psychology, Claire, isn't that? Because like you will find, I know I am, like the meals, that meal times that you might have um, at certain areas, certain places, with or without certain people, what you're eating is different. I know dinners at home are are pretty good, but dinners out might be a little bit, oh, we're out, what can we get, you know? Yeah, well, it absolutely does get triggered. Mm. But the same thing happens in response to emotions. Like let's say every time you're stressed, you eat. Well, when that happens, it does trigger your brain's reward centre. So your brain then starts Mm. to tell you, oh, you're feeling like this, go and eat chocolate or whatever. So to reprogram your brain takes a bit of consciousness on that and that has a name. It's called mindful eating. So the very next thing you eat today, got homework this morning, Mark, (laughs) the very next thing you eat, I want you to just really slow down, chew it and be hyper aware of what's happening in your mind and your body, the smell, what does it smell like, what does it taste like, How many times do you chew it? With no judgment, just being aware. So mindfulness is actually the pathway back towards improving your relationship with food, especially if it's gotten out of kilter over time just because life's so busy. That is something that's so easy to do because you can be on the quote-unquote right track and doing everything, but life gets in the way. A few things change a little bit and all of a sudden you find that, hang on, we're way off course a little bit. You know, true north and magnetic north are at vastly different places. Yeah, absolutely. And there have been interventions to try and help people improve their food relationship. And one of the key things that they've found is focusing on pleasure and enjoyment and some it of it is the, a relationship after all. It is a relationship. <laughs> needs a little bit of TLC. But what's interesting is that sometimes we forget that, you know, mm. because life's so busy, I just gotta, you know, feed the family, get the dishes done, bath, bed, all of all of those jobs that you forget about, oh, it's nice to sit with people or we eat these particular things because it's part of our culture or part of our family favourites. So that really is a key way of improving your food relationship. And as I was saying, in the intervention studies where they've got people to slow down, focus on that enjoyment and the pleasure principle, believe it or not, they actually found that people eat healthier as well and Mm. end up needing 
more vegetables and healthier food choices, it doesn't drive people to just eating chocolate. And surprisingly, it's it's the vegetables, the fruit, the wide variety that people come to as a way of feeling well on themselves based on what they're eating. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? It's a, it's a, whole, uh, it's a whole thing. And again, our homework today, uh, have your lunch, just think about it, just really think about what's happening yeah, there. Yeah, absolutely. And I want to just give a shout out for people who go, well, maybe my relationship is... Maybe it really does need some serious professional help. Well, there is a website called the Butterfly Foundation. It's got a helpline, actually, and lots of resources, especially for parents and teachers as well. And also, I've written an article on this for The Conversation. So some of those resources I mentioned, you can find them by linking to that article. All right, plenty to look at. Claire, as always, thank you very much. You've got our relationship with food sorted. Thank you for your time. It's a pleasure. Like I said, may not, might not need a divorce, but might have to go sleeping on the couch for a couple of nights. That might be the best way out of it. 2NURFM 103.7. A broadcast service of the University of Newcastle.